Democracy Hub went out to protest illegal and unethical mining, resulted in 54 of you being arrested. What happened? Okay, we're going for the jugular. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's, it, it's something which I'm still reflecting. Um, it's, it's, I think in many res respects, uh, trying to make sense of some of the incidents that have happened would take a, a while for us to be able to fully unpack. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a process that we as a nation must be willing to, to go through. Even for us at Democracy Hub, one of the things that we're going to be doing is petitioning Parliament for an inquiry to be conducted into the way in which the police conducted or misconducted themselves vis-a-vis -vis young people who came up wanting to believe in our democracy. But the big thing is that one of the things that we have been saying consistently is that we have to be able to mobilize as many of civic individuals, civic-minded individuals, to be able to add a push Mm -hmm. to some of the big questions that are facing our democracy. There's none more urgent we consider today than the crisis of, of the environment, which has been provoked by responsible and illegal mining across the, uh, across the rural, rural landscape of Ghana. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what we wanted to have a conversation on and draw the nation's attention on. Right. But mixed into that, there are also bigger conversa other conversations. One, since last year's Occupy Jello House, Democracy Up! Face the Country have received at least six successive injunctions that have been placed on any attempt to protest. So it's a bigger question about the freedom of assembly and the ways in which the courts have been instrumentalized in order to cut that down or mm. to, to restrict the scope for persons being able to, to, to protest. And we saw that happen again prior to this protest that the police, even though they had been notified three months to the event, rushed to the courts a few days before the, the protest and came out saying that, ah, again waving in the air uh, an ex parte injunction that they supposedly obtained. Mm -hmm. Now, our position was clear. Even if, the, in fact, a legal ex parte injunction had been obtained, we we're going to defy it. Because we wanted Ghanaians to pay attention to the ways in which, insidiously, the courts were being used to disarticulate constitutional rights. That's a big problem for us. But that's not even what happened. They went to court and obtained an ex parte injunction, which is unconstitutional to begin with, and unconstitutional orders must, must not even be respected. What, what, I mean, why do you think that what the police did prior to the protest was yeah. unconstitutional? So the, the courts have been clear that when you have been notified of a protest and you disagree as to whether or not the protest should go on, you both come before a judge. And then I explain to the judge why this protest is important and must happen on this date. And then you tell the courts why you are not able to be able to ensure that the protest goes on. And the judge makes the decision in the interest of our democracy. But that's not what they, they did, and that's not what they've been doing consistently. They go to court, ex parte, meaning that without notice to us, and then go and inform a judge that for X, Y, these reasons, it is urgent, give us an order to stop them. And the courts have been clear that you cannot continue to do that, because that's the past we're trying to get away from. And, and, and in 1994, when the MPP went to, court, to the, to, to the mm. Supreme Court, the Supreme Court said clearly, one of the ways in which our rights have been suppressed is this manner in which the police behave as if we live in a police state. And that the, it, it's transformed itself into we need permission. And that we don't want a permit, pers permission regime. Right. We want a notification. You just tell the police and you go ahead. Mm. The explanation the police had provided the public in mm. one of their statements was that they were embarking on a three-day a, a three special operation. In fact, that only came on uh, the night before the event. That's right. So consistently... Well, they first obtained the injunction. We were clear that this is illegal. And they knew it was unconstitutional. And then they issued another statement to the public that, oh, don't worry, the protest is going to go ahead and everything is fine. We're going to provide security. Then the day prior, they invited us to a meeting where they said, we are not going to allow you to do it. But if you want to do it, here are six obscure locations. Go and be there instead. And we said, we wanted to understand your reasons for how you came up with those locations. They said, security traffic, things mm -hmm. like that. So we also went retreated and said, okay, we're happy to provide you six alternative locations that meet the criteria that you have proposed. They said they were going to confer and get back to us. Later they got back and said, no, they're not going to allow uh, that. So we understood that it had broken. We, we mm -hmm. couldn't reach an agreement. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go back to what has already been notified to you three months prior. Then in the ninth prior, they come up and say, we're holding special operations in Accra and we're shutting down the entirety of the city. You think it was a ploy? And that's the, you see, that for me, that's the bigger question in which, we are, which is being left unsaid. The idea that the entirety of this country, and particularly residents of Accra, can accept unexplained special operations for three days, which coincidentally just coincides with when we're doing the protest, but the idea that you can reserve for yourself the power to lock down Accra 
a short notice, without any explanation, without anybody calling you to order, without you feeling the need to justify to us, that in itself shows us the insidious nature in which police power is being exercised mm -hmm. to undermine our democracy. That's the conversation that we need to have in its, in its entirety. Right. Now, that conversation must be had, and that's one of the reasons why we think a parliamentary inquiry is important. Mm. But as far as we are concerned, whether or not you have decided for yourself at the last minute to organize whatever special operations, we need to have a conversation in the way in which the special operations can happen and constitutional rights to protest can also happen at the same time. That was not done. In fact, we called the police and I, I called the Accra Regional uh, Commander. Right. I called their lawyer as well and said, we need to have a framework in which protests can go on and can go on safely. They said they have orders of above not to engage us. So we understood clearly going out that this was going to happen. When did this meeting occur? The, so the, the meeting we had was... Uh, so we had the event on the Friday. So the meeting we had with them regarding the locations was on Thursday. Mm. On Friday morning, I had a call. I had a call with them on the phone regarding, again, let us, you have announced special operations. We don't know what that means. How does it impact and affect mm -hmm. our protest? Again, refusal to engage. So we told ourselves that the bigger point we want to be able to emphasize is that constitutional rights must always be respected. But force must be justified. We are not seeing that happen. But it is important for tomorrow that we don't resile in our, in, our, in, in our duty to ensure that these rights are respected. So we're going to go out and we're going to step out. Mm. And so when we got, we got to the 37 runabout, we saw that they had set up and closed everywhere else. But what they hadn't done was to stop motorists from coming in there while protesters were there. In fact, consistently we engaged them. And there's so many videos of them online that the traffic is going to affect protesters. People are likely going to lose their lives because it's just, uh, it, I mean, cars are moving. Mm -hmm. So can you block it at Kaukudi so that we can redirect them? They refuse to engage.